So we're talking about the data routing feature. You're probably familiar with this. This is how Greylog works right now. Data comes from the log source to the input, and then either stream rules or pipeline rules, throw it into the right stream. And then Luminate does its processing, pipelines do their processing, it lands in the stream. Um, and from there, right now, it then goes to any attached outputs and it goes to open search. So that's what we have today. All we're adding, uh, we've got this new bit that comes off the stream called routing. So this is like a multi-splitter. Um, you can turn it on or off for any of the three destinations. And we've added these filter rules, which means where routing decides all the stuff in the stream goes here or here. The filter rules are then the opposite. They're exclusions. They say this particular message isn't going here. So between the routing and the filter rules, we've got really intimate control of where any given message from a stream goes to in these three destinations. You've noticed there's a setup destination here that wasn't there before, the data warehouse. So that's our sort of data lake in the back end where customers can now throw all the data they don't really care about, where it's stored cheaply and we don't charge against their license for anything that's stored only here. So the idea is customers can route the stuff they're not that bothered about. They don't actually want to pay against their license right now, but they need to keep it for compliance. They can shunt it over using routing into just the data warehouse. If we look at our list of streams and we've got all these nice new columns now. We can see the data warehouse is already turned on for these two. If we go into the default stream, we get to this nice new page. We can see the stuff that's coming in, processing, and the destinations. This is the routing. So right now, stuff that's going to the default stream is getting routed to the index set. It's not getting routed to data warehouse. It's not getting routed to outputs. We want to route it to something else. We just turn it on. Boom. So now data from this stream is also getting saved to our data warehouse backend. If we open that up, every five minutes or so, this will update. We'll be able to see the count messages in there, the file size, the date of the first one that landed, and the most recent message in there, which is reassuring to know. And here's that filter rule interface I told you about, where you add in rules to exclude things. So we could, for example, say, just drop everything. We can say if it has the field source, boom. And now anything that gets sent to the data warehouse will actually get dropped. So nothing would arrive in the data warehouse while that filter was there. We remove the filter, stuff will go there again. To give you like a practical example of this, here's some data coming into my brain log right now. So it's uh, a bunch of HTTP logs. We've got three types, post, delete, and put. Here's a bunch of messages. Now, let's say I'm a customer and I've just rolled up Trent because I'm, I'm real mad that I'm going over my license usage and I don't need all this data and I need help getting rid of this data. So I'm back in my license usage again. We would help them figure out what they don't need. In this case, Mr. Customer, actually, he doesn't need these delete logs at all. And all we'd need to do is shunt his delete logs from going into open search to just going into the data warehouse. To give that example, the splendid stream one, we go to splendid stream one and go to the routing. And we go to the destinations and we go to the data warehouse and we go to the filter rules. So we say where of fields contains the field was called HTTP methods. And the value we didn't want was deletes. If we now went back to this page again. And we hammered search a couple of times, lo and behold, all these deletes would disappear because they're all being filtered into the data warehouse, but they're still there. If we then come to a situation in the future where Mr. Customers sent a bunch of stuff into just the data warehouse and he wants to get it back again, such as in this stream, if we search that stream, there's nothing in there because everything in there is only going to the data warehouse right now. The customers, oh, hey, could you just. Like how do I get back just today's data from the, from the warehouse? 
So we get the stream name, the splendid stream two. There it is. Splendid stream two. We go to the routing, the destinations, the date warehouse, and he wants to retrieve data. So we've got this nice button here. If there's data in the data warehouse that covers that period that we think isn't in open search, if you click on the click to retrieve button, it brings up this same dialogue that I'm going to bring up now, which is this. Oh, so we'll retrieve data from the warehouse from this stream for today from last the time. So I got my message with them. All right. That'll do. And we retrieve it. Boom. We get this nice little retrieval job that runs at the top. It runs and it keeps running and it keeps running. I reckon that's going to take about 20 seconds. We've got nowhere to be. We can wait for it. When that finishes, we run the search here, we're going to see the data has reappeared like magic. And suddenly there's data in the stream. Easy. So easy. Last of all, if we imagine we're an engineer, we're helping a customer on board and we've got to set up their data warehouse. Um, we go in here, we've got like this nice overview screen. We've got the back end, the details of it, building a back end, real simple, pull up this. Pick if it's the file system, whether it's S3, we'll go with the file system. Put in the file pass, has to be like a shared network drive in the lab, the name, the title. And then on the screen, there's a button, you just click active and that's it. 